In this video we dance limbo with the bandsaw and we do a hit and run on the camera. Hi guys and welcome back to the show. Today we continue building the turntable or media stand for our living room. In the first video I went through the design and lumber selection. So if you haven't seen that video I suggest you check that out and I'll post a link right up here. Today we're doing the rough sewing and milling and getting your stock flat and square is the basis of all good joinery. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right down to this. Look, I am Nomad Makes. This is a cheap and cheerful jigsaw. And even though I was using a really coarse blade, cutting this rock hard oak, the struggle was real. Better than gnawing the boards apart with my teeth, I guess. Suggestions for better jigsaws are very welcome in the comments, guys. Anyway, I used my circular saw wherever I could. This is English oak, a species of white oak called summer oak in Norway. It is not selected at all and originally milled to be used as cladding. It is bent, twisted, warped and has some knots in. So I'm cutting my work pieces quite small to be able to retain as much thickness as possible after the milling process. This is started out as 25 mm or 4 quarter thick and I'm hoping for 19 mm or about 3 quarters after the milling. Some places I made these relief cuts to ease the work on the bandsaw later. Over on my bandsaw I broke the pieces down further. This is the Metabo BAS216 Precision. It is a cheap and severely underpowered saw, but just as good as any other saws in its price range I guess. Anyway, I marked the workpiece on top of the board cupping, so the fact that the wood is pinching the blade is not making the situation better. Here you can see life in a 12 square meter or 130 square feet workshop while trying to get space for both me, the tools and the cameras. After changing to a brand new resawing blade I was able to break down quite large pieces on this saw. This white oak has spent some 20 years in a barn and it's really evil on my blades. When I did the last boards it felt like I was sawing with a string. To face plane the boards I used my Shekbuck HMS 850 planer thicknesser. I have made a review of this machine and I'll link to that up in the right corner and in the video description. 
I highly suggest you check out that video if you are considering this kind of machine or any other Shepak product as well for that matter. I look at the edge of the board to determine the grain direction, so I push the board with the grain over the planer. White oak is really prone to tear out and this really helps prevent that. You'll see me pushing both with and without gloves and push blocks. I'm trying to get a better grip on the boards. On a planer the outfeed table is the reference, but some of these boards were quite cupped lengthwise and if I push too hard down on the outfeed outfeed table, all I get is a cupped but smooth board. Here you can see how cupped and twisted some of these boards were. And if I had not cut the pieces this small, I would have been left with only rice paper to build with. At this point the chalk is being planed off, and I'm using post-it notes to track the individual parts. This is my Axminster Trade AT330ST thicknesser with a helical head. First I play in the rough side, getting that side flat and parallel to the first. When I take the boards down to final thickness I will shave off the same amount from each side, but I will do that after leaving the boards to rest for a night after the initial milling. To get one edge straight I'm using my table saw jointing sled. I might make a video on this, but I wanted to mix it up and show you guys more of the turntable build first. Anyway, I'm using standard 3 quarter inch T-Track and some toggle clamps from Amazon. I will link to them in the video description. Oh, and the baseboard is from an IKEA shelf. First I line up one edge with the edge of the baseboard by eye. I'm still keeping the pieces oversized. All I want to do now is to get to S4S or getting the stock flat and square. The blade I'm using here is still the stock blade that came with the saw, and it worked quite well to be honest. 
But I've been sent several new blades for this saw that I'm eager to show you guys in my future videos. Squaring up the last edge I also did on my cabinet saw. I've got to say, the Laguna Fusion 3 is really my favorite tool in the workshop at the moment. So I received a comment on my unboxing video of this saw where a guy was really unhappy with Laguna customer service. It's always sad when people are not happy with their purchases and I don't know where he was located but I can tell you that, that I've had nothing but great service from the Norwegian importer. Guys, I've got to say, I really enjoy the process of milling stock. It is quite rewarding seeing the wood go from unselected rough cut boards to a flat square stock ready for joinery. This is a phase of the build where you lay the foundation for accurate joinery later and it should not be rushed.
So now we are S4S, or at least done with the first stage of the milling process. The pieces are still oversized or a bit too thick. They will now sit for a few days, letting them take new shape after releasing tension through the milling. Then I will take them to final thickness. But I'll not show you that, it's just more of the same of what we did in this video. I'm currently practicing some panel glue-ups, as I may change the design and go for oak wood panels rather than the white painted MDF. But time will show. Now I will leave you guys with a sneak peek further into the project. And if you want to stay up to date with my projects, remember to check me out on Instagram. But again, that is it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a thumbs up. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. Should you want to support me, you'll find a Patreon link and affiliate links to products I use and recommend below. If you don't feel like that, you can help by telling your friends about the channel on your social media of choice. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.